<laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley. Every week, we bring you programs that we hope will inspire you. Uh, we typically center on the themes of innovation, education, and entrepreneurship. And as a Rotary Club, we're interested in service in all its forms. And so this week, we have speaking with us Danielle Pavilona. She is a student at Laney University and has a wonderful history of work in high school, both with her uh, Interact Club and also with the Girls Who Code program. And the Girls Who Code program is going to be the topic of her presentation today. So with that, I will hand it over to Danielle. Danielle, cheers. Hey, hello. So uh, let me share this and we can all start. Awesome. All right. So hello, everyone. My name is Danielle Pavlona, and I'm going to be talking to you all today about Girls Who Code. So before we dive into depth about the organization, I'll briefly reintroduce myself. Okay, so, so currently I am a freshman majoring in computer science at Laney College in Oakland. And through my journey to college, Girls Who Code has been such a has had such a significant impact on me. And during those two years, <laughs> I'm proud to admit that, if anything, Girls Who Code has truly helped me recognize that computer science is something that I was passionate about. And this is something that I wanted to do, and I was just set with it. Uh, prior to my senior year, I was a student of the summer immersion program at Pixar Animation Studios with 18 other girls of very diverse backgrounds. And during that opportunity, I was able to polish my programming skills, learn different computing languages, and network with the many employees of Pixar. I loved every bit of the opportunity, not because it was just Pixar or because I had so much free food, but because I truly gained skills necessary for the future in the tech industry. So this summer, I took advantage of the opportunity to become a teacher assistant. Um, I applied, interviewed, and was shortly hired for the summer program at Facebook in Menlo Park. Transitioning from a student to a teacher was definitely a strange yet beautiful process. Um, being able to instill growth with the girls and see them produce something that they never thought they would be able to do was the most rewarding part of the program seeing girls struggle to, struggle to figure out if the problem, um, struggle to figure out a problem yet celebrate with a small little dance or remember um, with a small little dance. It's just a friendly reminder of why I wanted to come back and help out with this program. So um, if it wasn't for that organization, its values, mission, and experience that I have gained from it, I definitely wouldn't have come back to become a teacher assistant. And uh, after all, this program has shown me that us girls can break those awful stigmas and code projects to inspire those around us. So without a doubt, there's definitely a problem at hand. Computing skills are the most sought out after um, in the US job market because inevitably computing is where the jobs are um, as they make up our future. But the problem is, where is the representation of females in STEM? So extensive research has shown that women in the computing workforce has declined from about 37% to, um, in 1995, to about 18% today. Um, as Resma Shojani has once said during her TED talk, it is evident that we're raising our girls to be perfect and raising our boys to be brave. The bravery deficit created shows why women are underrepresented in STEM. And although generally the interest in computer science declines over time, the largest drop happens between the ages of 13 to 17. If you look at the graph, you'll notice that the percentage of females interested in computer science declines from about 66 to 4%, meaning by 2020, if of the 1.4 million jobs available and ready for those in computing, only about 3% of women fill up those positions, while the rest goes to male graduates. These numbers display the tragic truth of the poor representation of women, especially those of diverse backgrounds. A solution to that problem? Girls Decode. 
So Girls Who Code is a nonprofit organization that was founded by Reshma Sujani in 2012 in New York. Um, although these girls are taught the fundamentals of web design, computer science, and robotics, what's most important is that they learn something more than code, uh, sisterhood, bravery, and perseverance, to push through all challenges faced among the way together as a sisterhood. Girls will learn how to collaboratively solve various challenges, and these girls will learn how to persevere together. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so the mission states that the Girls Who Code works to inspire, educate, and equip girls with the competing skills to pursue the 21st century skills, meaning that through this program, the girls are taught skills that are necessary for being hired at tech industries. Um, evidently, this organization works towards closing that awful gender gap we had talked about in the previous slides. So girls are taught various lessons on the fundamentals of competing languages through project-based learning. Uh, no matter what background she may come from, Girls Who Code wants to empower these young women to accomplish more. Notably, the many girls who participate in Girls Who Code programs come from different religious, financial, ethnic, racial, and cultural diverse backgrounds. Um, and that's the beautiful part of it all. There are two programs that um, girls from 6th to 12th grade may take advantage of in all 50 states. So uh, these include clubs and the summer immersion program. And it is noted that both these programs are absolutely free. The clubs program is open to students from 6th to 12th grade and often and oftentimes revolve around the school year. Uh, there's no application required. Girls are just prompted to attend the club after school of select days for about two hours or so. And whether the club may be in a library, school, community center, girls can find out their nearest club on the uh, Girls Who Code website. So in order to start a Girls Who Code club program, the president or the starter of the club um, must have completed the summer immersion program. The students who lead the program may teach the lessons, but it's also recommended uh, to reach out and invite someone who works in the tech industry to, um, to see if they're able to teach a new lesson or so. Now, the summer immersion program, uh, this opportunity is focused from 10th to 12th graders, students who are graduating high school are not allowed to join. However, they're able to contribute to the organization by volunteering. The summer immersion program is a free seven week program that requires students to apply. Mostly the questions ask if the student has had experience prior to the program, like what they want to seek from the program and simple questions about their family income. The reasons why the organization asked about this information is because Girls Who Code wants to make sure that low-income students are prioritized and granted a spot for the summer immersion program. During the seven weeks, food, transportation, and goodies are absolutely provided for. Um, if needed, students are able to request for a stipend to cover additional traveling expenses. The classroom for the SIP program takes place in leading technology companies such as Facebook, Twitter, Accenture, etc. Girls are prompted to attend class from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The students will be able to attend field trips, um, have guest speakers, learn about the fundamentals of programming, and implement what they have learned into a final project that they must show at graduation. So um, each program will have a graduation at the end, um, and groups of students will be able to present a project that they have programmed from scratch in front of their loved ones. Um, here are some notable projects that were produced by girls who, um, girls who code students after their seven-week program. So uh, like Tampon Run, a running game that destigmatizes menstruation cycles uh, by shooting tampons at enemies. <laughs> Um, the Gap Jumper, which is a game that shows what it's like um, to educate people about the wage gap for women. So by the end of the game, of the money that you have collected, money is taken away from you because it just shows how women are simply paid less. 
Now, through the various programs, Girls Who Code, um, girls are able to produce meaningful projects that focus on creating lasting impact in their communities. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of alumni in this sisterhood, and through this organization, the amount of women in tech grows tremendously. Towards the end of the program, the girls are invited to join Hire Me, which is the app that connects Girls Who Code alumni with many large tech companies who have pledged to hire these students. Um, the many programs that this organization offers are extremely beneficial to the girls and their futures, and I truly wish that every female high school student, at least once in their lifetime, takes advantage of attending a club meeting or joining a summer program. For their small contribution, <laughs> for their small contribution, um, it helps work towards a larger goal, and that is uh, more female representation in the tech industry. Thank you. <laughs> All right, very, very nice, cool. Uh, so Danielle, I have got got a host of questions, and Yay. Chris does as well. Uh, first, I want to introduce uh, actually those of us who are on the call. Uh, be in addition to Danielle, uh, we have Chris Cochran, uh, part of part of the, you know, the the charter group that launched uh, the mm -hmm. Eco Silicon Valley. He is in he is in Ontario and Canada. Uh, oh, nice. my, my name is Rushton Hurley. I am the charter president of, of the club. And while I, I live in the Bay Area, I'm currently in Chicago uh, after working with some folks uh, here in Illinois. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so just a, a question that I want to get to before I get to ask, and then, <laughs> uh, then I'll hand it over to Chris for for his first question. So, so let's say that uh, that that there's a Rotarian watching this program from a place like um, Magnolia, Arkansas, or you know, Muhammad, Illinois. Or Brockville, Ontario. You know, you know, one of these places where you know where we where you know it, it's clearly <laughs> not it's not it's not, a, it's not a tech hub, right? Mm. And what they want is to is, is they they know some students maybe at their at their local high school, but maybe they're in the interact club, and they say, oh, this this kid would be perfect. <laughs> what is it that that they go through? So you know, you talked about having to apply to be part of the summer program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is that something where there's like an online application and if they're successful, all of the expenses are covered in terms of getting to a place where it is and going through it and all? I mean, how does that work? Oh, yeah. Okay. So for the summer program, um, students are, of course, prompted to apply online. And once they are kind of accepted and it, it's a link, it's not much of a lengthy process. They send in an application and within about like a few weeks or so, they should be getting a response from the Girls Who Code organization stating um, a program that is nearest to them or which they have selected is closest to their area. And um, they usually uh, recognize what is closest and give it to the student. Um, afterwards, they send you a bunch of emails about the logistics of the program, such as how to get there, what, um, how, like how to get there, and just a heads up of, oh yeah, like food is covered because at these hosted um, classrooms, food is provided, the laptops are provided, everything is there for the students because money shouldn't be an issue to learn something that women are truly passionate about or are interested in. So they wanna make sure that they have to pay for absolutely nothing. Um, if the if it's a little too far for a student to head to like uh, say their classroom's a bit too far um girls you code can offer a flexible stipend to the student so yeah it's definitely awesome so, so it is the case that uh, someone in in a remote part of the country could participate in this yeah awesome very cool go ahead and uh and Stop the screen share for a minute, and we'll kind of bring all of our faces in, into view, which is kind of questionable <laughs> for me and Chris, but all good from, from you know. Where... Oh, it's right there. I didn't do that. <laughs> no worries at all. Okay. okay. So, Chris, why don't you pop in? You know, what, what, uh, what struck you about the presentation? Well, I'm not sure at what point I popped in. I was saying... <laughs> right at the beginning. In, in the beginning. Yeah, I got the new link a little bit late, but anyways. Mm. I noticed you said something about the drop in women who are interested in high school. I think it was from 66% to 4%. Mm -hmm. that happens in late teenage years. Why, mm -hmm. in your opinion, does that happen? 
Um, as I said during my presentation, um, which is also from Reshma Sujani, who is the founder of Girls You Code, she had a TED talk that was actually um, about teaching girls bravery, because um, it's kind of, it's pretty evident that um, girls growing up are taught to be perfect. You can't you can't do this. You can't do that. But boys are taught to be brave. Like they can. They can do anything. Like, come, that... come live in Canada, you'll find just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm serious because here we, we, this, what you're doing, this is great. Okay, it, it works for you and it's, it's fabulous. I assume somebody from another country, like I'm in Canada, or if mm. somebody in England or somebody in Australia wanted to, to join or come to this, I'm assuming they could, assuming they qualify. <laughs> well, mm. here, I'm concerned that what you do creates rifts in society rather than inclusion. It's very much here, I mean, our society up here is about inclusion, everybody doing everything, rather mm -hmm. than segmenting, saying it's, that's just for men, that's just for women, that's just for kids, et cetera. So how do you try and make this inclusive so that you know, it helps everyone? Oh, um, so there are plenty of, I personally believe that this program was made especially for girls um, not because like there's an inclusion issue um, or anything but it's just that women are very much underrepresented in computer science and it's pretty um, like there's there's many computer science programs that are male dominant and I think that having a girls who code organization creates such a safe space and the sisterhood for girls to feel comfortable in learning without um, having being reminded of these awful stigmas of women can't code or they're they shouldn't be on the computer um, and I think girls who code is just a safe space and it's totally inclusive of many girls of different background. Um, of course, they don't discriminate against male applicants, but um, this program is focused towards um, improving that gap, that gender gap. So, yeah, when, so I think good, about, so when, when I think about the work I've done as a teacher, and, mm -hmm. and especially thinking about the, the contention, you know, that, uh, that Saojani uh, put forward about that, that difference between girls needing to be perfect and boys needing to be brave, that to me really captures the idea well. You know, like when, mm -hmm. when, I, when I think about all of the, the students that I've had as a high school teacher, you know, that, it, it's, that just captures the idea. And so mm -hmm. by the time you get to high school, I mean, you know, girls are kind of in that space of like, let's wait and see, as opposed to jump in and try. Uh, and, and I think that that may be more of an American thing uh, and, mm -hmm. and that's to our detriment, right? So it, yeah me very cool that, that, that such a program is, is, is available for sure because there's mm -hmm. certainly loads of, of, of programs going on for, for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. so, so another piece about this by the way while we mentioned that TED talk so do, do you know I mean obviously there are these numbers right you know, mm -hmm. you know we look at, at things like you know the interest in, uh, in STEM fields that, that you know girls had you know in the early 80s and you know kind of how they were you know what kind of numbers we had in terms of that you look at the declining numbers you know as as girls grow older separate from those numbers was there something that Sujani or perhaps you experienced at some point just kind of at a personal level that made you think oh man this is for me or that made her think oh my god this this program has to happen <laughs> oh yeah um i can talk from my own personal experience so um I had wanted to apply for a computer science class at my high school, um, and I thought that, okay, maybe if I take this class, I probably can just do a different internship over the summer, not do Girls of Code. Um, so as I went to go meet the teacher, I noticed that a lot of the students, like I was very much introduced by all the males in the classroom. So I had talked to the teacher and he said, hi, um, my name is Danielle. I, I'm very much interested in taking this class next year. Um, I just wanted to know what were you teaching and um, how does your classroom look like? And my teacher was really surprised that I came up to him. He was just like, oh, 
you want to do computer science? And I was just so appalled. I was like, oh my God, like what? I am really interested in this and I don't see why that should be an issue. And he's like, oh yeah, we don't usually have a lot of girls apply. Um, but if you want, I have like a free period, like next, next year I'm taking like AP comp sci, but, but you might want to take introduction to computer science. And I was like, no, I, I have enough knowledge of computer science. Like I'm a self-taught programmer. Um, I can take an AP comp sci class. And he was just telling me, no, you should definitely take introduction to computer science. And I was just so appalled. Um, and I just knew that okay, forget that. I am going to do a Girls Who Code program, put my all into that application, and get something so much more than that experience that I had with that teacher. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, love, I love that you, that you persevered, right? You know, it's one of the words that came up, you know, as, as you talk about the nature of the program, what we're trying to, you know, help, help people see. You know, I, I think grit is one of those words that'll pick up a lot, right? Um, for 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 any of our our Rotarians watching this who are thinking, oh my God, you know, is this happening in in schools near me? Or are there teachers who are looking at girls saying, are you sure you want to? You're a girl, you know, what I mean, or or whatever flavor of that thought might be out there. <laughs> one of the things that that you may know because, you know, not everybody has kind of the same, uh, you know, kind of get involved that that Danielle may have that sometimes you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna take a class at the, at the local college or the local community college in computer science. So, so that's a great move as well, in part uh, because it, it will teach a teen, actually, whether, whether a girl or a boy, mm -hmm. it'll teach a teen that you can succeed in a college environment, which is really important, you know, because a lot of kids, you know, look at college as this thing that's like, oh my God, you know, can I, you know, this kind of thing. But, but if you're like, no, I, I want to learn computer programming. And, and, and you take that class at the college and you discover, hey, I, I, can, I can do all of this as well. Mm -hmm. That's really good for competitive colleges to understand that, that you know, a student has had success in, in, a, in a college environment before. It's actually one, one of the very top things competitive colleges look for. Do you already have any kind of computer, uh, any kind of college transcript? So that's a cool thing to have there. Mm -hmm. So, so as you begin to think about, you know, kind of what you want to do uh, uh, going forward with this, right? Like, you know, what, what are the, some of the things for you? You know, you're, you've still got several years of college. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, I assume, quite hopeful that one of these companies might be a good match for you on the other end. But as you think about that, it's not just about working at that, that college. Yeah. What, what, is it, what is it you want to do with this? Um, with the knowledge that I gained from Girls Who Code? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Um, just from my first year of doing Girls Who Code, um, since I was exposed to the many wonders of computer science and digital art um, at Pixar, um, I, it just really, like, I took it very personal. I was just like, oh my gosh, like, I am in love with graphic design um, and I love programming. So I wanted to see if I can do something with the two. So I've actually been looking um, through a bunch of internships or um, a bunch of free programs that I can do to kind of like learn more about how I can make 3D animation, do video game programming. Um, Cause it's something that I think Girls Who Code is like, it, although some, like most of the applications that I've like applied to are like, oh, you must be like at least this much or, or like this old X amount of old. Um, I think that despite what age I may be, um, just shooting for that opportunity is just the best that I've got. Um, and Girls Who Code has definitely taught me that. It's okay to be brave and just try new things because you'll never know what happens. Um, that's just me <laughs> taking my big shot and uh, <laughs> trying to see what I can learn from. So, Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from Chris or Ken who's joined us? Very cool. I would I would just add in one comment the fact you want to go into graphic arts and animation that's great because I'm a filmmaker having 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 been in the business my my entire life with my own company working in places from Toronto to Hollywood and uh, believe me good place for you would be someplace like the Skywalker Ranch They're right up your alley they're leading the world right now in 3D animation oh thank uh, you okay if you if they offer anything go for it because mm -hmm. that's the place for that particular 
thing that you'd like to do or explore, that they're they're the best right now, bar none. Thank nice. you. We're gonna write that down. <laughs> yeah. And and by the way, for for anyone watching, you know, if if there is a teacher sharing this particular recording with uh, his or her class, Chris's advice there is is huge, right? You know, like what what did it, what did it boil down to? It, it's that message of if they offer something, go for it. Right? right, because so often, so often, people look at it and go, "Oh, that would be cool," and then they don't actually act. Right, and mm -hmm. and sometimes they need a little encouragement. Teachers, you can be the encouragers, <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, just just give it a shot because you never know. And if they say no, ah, you know, you know, you tried, whatever, find another one and try for that. All good. So cool. Any any anything else? Like Ken, uh, you know, thank you for joining us. Do you do you have something? Or Chris, did you have another comment? Or uh, anything else we got to have there before we wind things down? Uh, no, I, I just joined in. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I'll talk to her after the recording. Okay, all good, all good, all good. Ken, thanks for joining us, for sure. Um, so, so, Danielle, what I want to do is I want to wind down our recording. Um, I'll do some logistical things, and then I'll ask you for any final thoughts before we, before we stop the recording piece of this. Of course, as always, all of us who are on the call at the moment can continue talking with the speaker, which is a great, fun piece of <laughs> getting involved with these recordings. Uh, but for all folks who are participating right now, both our members and our guests, please let us know you were here. Members, as always, you know that uh, that reports your, your attendance, and that, that's critical. Guests, by doing everything properly at the attendance piece, uh, and getting your email address in there, you'll get an email that you can share with your club secretary so that can serve as a makeup for any missed meeting that you may have. Uh, we are always happy to have guests. We hope that you'll share your thoughts in our discuss system at the bottom as well, D-I-S-Q-U-S. -S. Uh, and down there, you may have a question for Danielle. Pop it in there. She has time the week that this, that this recording is the program for our club. Uh, she can come in and, and perhaps answer. We, we never require that of speakers, of course. Uh, you know. People are busy, but, but if, uh, if she has the chance, she'll do it. And we may even have that conversation with each other about the cool things we're seeing. Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to say that uh, you know, our club is one designed to really explore what the possibilities of technology are for service. How can technology serve the business of service? And so we thank you for joining us this week uh, to kind of see how we're going about that. We hope that this is, this is the kind of effort that can uh, bring new things to Rotary and to service efforts all over the world. So to finish this off, Danielle, I'll, I'll give you the last word. Oh yeah, sure. So it's just something that I really wanted to reiterate that I've talked in my um, presentation. It's just um, what we can learn from the Girls Who Code program is just simply more than code. Um, we, the Girls Who Code, um, or through the Girls Who Code program, um, we're not just teaching the girls how to be perfect, but to simply be brave and persist on. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody, we will see you next week. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>